Now here's a couple of tips in colder weather, especially in the autumn when there's a lot of leaves in the water. If you're on a river, they all get washed down and invariably they just lay on the bottom. And it happens with lakes as well. It makes it really tricky for fishing. Sometimes it could be masking your hook bait. So autumn can be a good time for fishing, but when the leaves actually come down for about two or three weeks, it can be a bit slow until the next flood washes all those leaves through. They just lay on the bottom and they'll cover your bait up, especially if you're fishing with a feeder. Now, I'm fishing with one of my homemade feeders here, down on the River Wye, just giving it a go. You've got to give it a go, and you've got to be in it to win it, as I say. So I'm fishing with this. Now, if you fished this on the bottom, two tips here, fish this on the bottom, and you fished your hook just there, the chances are the leaves slide down the line and clog on top of the feeder. Now, that doesn't look right, because it's hanging. If, it's laying, if the leaves are laying on the bottom, that's fine. But if they're hanging up the line here, I've got a feeling it's going to put those fish off, especially in clear water conditions. So my tip would be a nice long tail, what we call a long tail like this, look. Four feet, at least four feet. And I've got a little banded pellet there, about an eight mil pellet on the end of that. And that way, A, the fish aren't going to be spooked by the leaves on the line because they're further back. And B, instead of the bait, this little pellet here is soon going to get lost and inside all those leaves you're not going to be able to see it. So being further back, the current might move it and it could just be in the zone of a, a chub or a barbel or something like that and get you that extra fish. Now, here's a tip on filling the feeder up. Now, it's all too easy when you're filling a feeder. Let's get this one here, just like this. Get some ground bait and just cram it and jam it all in. Two things, don't jam it so tight that it doesn't come out. If you wind in, oh, it sounds like I've got myself an echo in here. If you wind in, if you wind in and it's still in there, that means you've packed it too, you had made it too stiff or you squeezed it in there too much. But I see it quite a bit, people just put ground bait in there. Well, hang on, what do you got on the hook? Have you got ground bait on the hook? No, you might have a piece of luncheon meat, you could have worms, you could have maggots, you could have these pellets. Well, surely you want some of those samples around the downstream end when you're fishing in a river. So the best thing I do is make up just a light mix of feed here I've got the four mil pellets, regular coarse four mil pellets, which is just my base feed and a little bit of bread in there as well. But I don't fill it right up. I fill it about a third full there. And the reason I use my homemade feeders now is because I like these big holes. They empty out quickly. Here's my pellets. Okay, so I've got my pellets there. You could also use a big single hook with what they call these, donkey chokers. That's right, really big halibut pellets. You use those singly on a big hook but still, why not put three or four in there as samples? So what I suggest, we do this as a standard procedure with maggots anyway, is, I'll show, you the, I'll show you the tip what I'm doing, it's a third, a third, and a third. There is my third of hook bait samples, and then I'm just gonna cap it off, like this, with a bit of feeder, not, not, not gonna squeeze it too hard on there, not gonna squeeze it too hard. Now, the thing is, try and make the bottom end of the feeder just so it's just hanging in there because as it lays down that is the one that's going to get broken up first that will gradually crumble down and break up and go and that allows your hook bait samples lunch and meat whatever you put in there etc maggots look they're alive they'll help break it up but something like rigid like these could be sweet corn anything that's not live it's just going to sit there if you pack it too tight so you pack the top end of it tight fine that's okay but the bottom end just compact it a little bit so that when it breaks up, these hook samples go trickling down in the current and then they'll come all the way down to your hook bait. It's just a little totally awesome tip. Well, two tips there. Could actually get you that extra fish. Best place for this is out there in the water. Here's another tip if you're fishing barbel swim feeders on a rough bottom, say salmon rivers, big boulders, that type of thing. Don't just wind it and don't just retrieve it because the feeder's going to get hung up either around a stone, a boulder or in a weed bed. Thought I had a bite then. Far better just to hit it hard like we do beach fishing or rock fishing, get it up and away from any snag straight away. So I just wind down 
and then I hit it with the rod and get it up and off, hopefully. Once you get it moving, you're okay, you can then slow up, retrieve as per normal, but it's very, really important that you get it up and away. So wind down quickly, hit it hard, get it moving, and then hopefully you can rebate for another cast. There's nothing I hate worse than retackling all the time. Here's another totally awesome tip a lot of people might not think of. When there's a lot of current running, these are some of Woody's feeders. They are really chunky ones for the Y. Great big weight in there. But of course, you cannot also change the shape of them. You can crush them down like that. So you can do that even with my galvanised fencing ones. Just squeeze them down like that. And that way, you can see the shape little bit more streamlined it might just sit in that fast water a little bit longer and those few extra seconds could be when that barbel or chub pick the bait up Trapped in space. still living every day in a positive way now here's another totally awesome tip I use it barbel fishing in a river. Very often you might run out of the right size bands for the right size pellets, you know. Like if you've got nice small ones like this, great, they fit the pellet. Sometimes you run out and you have to use another size. If it's slightly too big and you keep worrying that it's going to slip off and you'll have nothing left on the hook, just get your pellet and just get a pen knife and score two little grooves either side of the pellet on the cellular side, just score them like that. Then, when you go to put your pellet on with the band stretcher, it goes up and over and it just lodges in there, nice and neat, slide it off and then put the hook on and I put the hook away from the edge where it's been grooved. And that's, look, it's not gonna, I can flick it around, flick it around, flick it around it's staying on so if you do get caught out with the wrong band size for pellet banding don't forget groove the pellet and you'll find it might just nick in there stay in the hook a bit longer gives you that extra shot at getting a fish I know it's hard when I'm gone but I back someday to so keep searching through this misty hell.